everybody welcome back to we are the batman i'm mike and this is matthew all right today is the first uh we are we're, we are continuing our breakdown series but now instead of breaking down the live action batman films we're going to be breaking down uh the early days of the bat family in uh in, in a in the year one series we're taught we're starting off with here uh and we're going to kick things off with of course the year one of year one's batman year one uh written by frank miller uh we we've been talking about this for weeks now saying this was coming this was coming we've had ample opportunity to talk about year one and now we actually can uh so before we get into that we do have a little tiny bit of news to get through don't we matthew let's go to that gun show baby i don't know if we have any gun show news per se the most we really if it's really decent, have, it's gun show now. You know? Yeah, it's pretty much true. Well, th- this 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 particular thing is the is 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 a little to do with with James Gunn as possible, and that we finally got the first actual trailer teaser trailer, we'll call it, for Matt Reeves, Colin Farrell, the Penguin series coming to Max. Still don't have an actual date yet, but we know fall fall twenty twenty four, which is kind of what we figured. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, my my thought on it is that considering that the movie the batman takes place you know the week of halloween or you know or i'm sorry right after election day so like the second week of starts on halloween goes over a couple weeks ends you know whatever that tuesday in november is that first or second yeah. tuesday in november so the show probably takes place sometime around Thanksgiving. So it would track to me. The show might come out around Thanksgiving time. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I don't. I, what do you think I, the trailer though, dude? I, I, it, it, Cause we, we didn't watch it together. We watched it separately because it came out you know, like in the middle of the day and yeah, I was working, you were working. <laughs> yeah. Um, w- 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 You watched it. What'd you think of it, man? I thought it was interesting. Like I'm, pretty much into what matt reeves is selling me for this batman world yeah so like i'm gonna watch the show i was gonna watch it no matter what but the trailer like you still have those moments of like is that really colin farrell no it's not i refuse to believe that's colin farrell it's insane you know but um i don't believe it i do not believe it (laughs) yeah i've watched the video of him turning into him i'm still like "Mm." i have seen all the evidence in the world that tells me that that is colin farrell I know it's Colin Farrell. I don't believe it's Colin Farrell because it's just that fucking impressive. Yeah, it's so it looks cool. Like, you know, look, I've told you before, I'm not exactly the the biggest fan of like the crime thing. But as far as those shows go, I'm interested to what? see it. You're not a big fan of crime. Yeah. <laughs> and crime stories. You know, I hate Goodfellas. But um, <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> but my point is, is like. I'm I'm interested to see what this does, and I'm interested to see how connected this is to the next movie. Yeah, because even though like those, you know, the thing the big thing for me is this is where I'll crap on the MCU. Like they've had tons of these MCU shows. Mm-hmm. As of yet, not a single one has influenced or connected to any of the movies. Oh, that's that's not true. I mean, seriously, like I'm talking about vision and multiverse of madness. Correct. And they reset her character completely. And suddenly she was a villain again, even though by the end of that, it didn't seem like she was a villain anymore. I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't know. That's a discussion for another show. (laughs) Correct. That's not based on DC stuff. My point more is that like secret invasion. Yeah. None of thing that happened in that movie was reflected in the Marvels at all. No, you know, no, that was such a like, misfire. But also Secret Invasion was a huge misfire on its own. Correct. No, I, I get what you're saying. Like in there and I think I think the reason that we're seeing it like this is because because it's playing in its own little world and it's such a small little sandbox that it's playing in. You kind of have the freedom of budget and schedule to do it because you're just yeah. working with the same set and the same crew for everything. And you're just yeah. going in order, so you kind of have. There's not as many moving parts, I guess. Is it would be the this is why they're able to pull this off with this. Well, but also it's only been one movie, so it's not like I'm not going to sit here and act like they're pulling off some great huge feat because it's like okay, <laughs> they've done one movie, and they've put out a, a trailer and a half. <laughs> yeah. um, but that being said, like as somebody who was like a big fan of stuff like The Sopranos, The Departed 
Goodfellas. Um, oh, what's the uh, Reservoir Dogs? I was about to say, what's the one Tarantino movie that I like? Uh, Reservoir Dogs. Like, I, the guys, there's one thing you know about me. Mikey loves me a, a, a good mobster movie. I, I love me a mobster movie. I love an organized crime story. Uh, it's part of the reason uh, why I like the Batman so much is because it's a story about organized crime. Uh, yeah. And that's why what we're going to talk about in a little bit here, year one works so well is because it's about Batman and organized crime. So if you tell me I get to spend eight episodes with a powerhouse performance like Colin Farrell's living in in, in organized crime underworld, and also we're going to sprinkle on the cherry on top that is Clancy Brown as Salvatore Moroni. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All in, you've sold me. Yes, I'm done. yes daddy, please. <laughs> please, daddy Matt Reeves more. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, so on board for this. It looks great. It. I mean, there were so many shots in the trailer that were direct mirrors or references to shots that were in the Batman. Yeah. Like the shot of him in the elevator standing right where uh, Bruce stood when he came up there. Um, you know, the shot of him in uh in falcone's you know game you know little lounge area that he had there after the flood looking out over everything like like i think this is going to pick up quite literally like in the middle of the final sequence of the batman and go from there yeah because i mean the thing with that in the batman like after falcone is killed that's the last time we see the penguin. Like there's the rest of the movie you never go back to him except for when he's looking out over the city we get that one shot right at the end so we don't know what he's doing, what's going to happen. And that's so, after all the flooding. So I think, I think like what you're hitting at, like we're, we're going to see him. We're going to see what he was doing when the flood was happening. Yeah. And it's just interesting. I'm, I'm yeah. down for it. Yeah, me too. What other news you got, buddy? Um, I think that's actually it, to be honest with you. Um, we did get a first look at, um, I'm trying to, uh, my internet is being very slow today for some reason. Uh, we got we got a first look at um, the engineer on set uh, in, in for shooting in Superman, but uh, you know it it looks like it's not a it's not a great look of the suit, and it's obviously not the completed composited you know yeah. CGI and all that. So I mean I'm not going to see, and also like the engineer is not a character I know a whole hell of a lot about either. So I'm not going to act like I know it enough to say anything about it. But that's really kind of it. I know everyone, you know, and I know we kind of talked about this a little bit previously, but like the Batman two getting delayed, like that's, that's not, that's, that's not surprising. That's not yeah. shocking at all. Yeah. It's fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, and you know, uh, oh, real quick while I'm thinking about it, uh, uh, shout out to, uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger found out uh, he had a pacemaker input in on Monday. Shout out to Mr. Freeze, uh, uh, a a member of an unfortunate cast uh, in the Batman unit in the Batman family, but a member of the Batman, and we all love Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come that on. somehow McFarland Toys made toys of that movie before yeah. they made toys of Batman Forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger, man. I don't know. It's the it's look. It, it it's the it's the power of a bad movie. Look at the room. That's true. That's true. Look at the room. You know. All right. Uh, let's get into our main topic of today's show. Uh, that is Batman Year One. We're going to be talking about both the graphic novel and the animated film to some degree. Uh, it's an animated film we have danced around for months because we knew we were going to be doing this episode. So we were like, let's wait. Let's just, let's yeah. try and avoid talking about it as much as possible because there's a lot to be said about both the graphic novel and the movie um, because I think all the, well, let me, let's, let's start here. Let's start here. Matt, how what are your feelings overall about just the story of Batman Year One? I, not not graphic novel versus versus yeah. movie, just just Batman Year One, the concept, the story. What do you what, like? How, where are you with it? I I this is probably one of my favorites, and I think the big thing is it's also a little difficult nowadays to think about what was happening in DC. Like this is literally Frank Miller redoing his origin and what's weird is this is frank miller redoing his origin after he has done his finale so the dark knight returns was 
published before year one, but the Dark Knight Returns happens literally right a after. year before. It was yeah. it was eighty six. Yeah, but this both of these stories happen or are released after Crisis on Infinite Earths. So you've got this whole jumble of what's been kept, what's been lost, what's what, blah, blah, blah. You know, kind of like with New 52 and Rebirth within the last 10 years. So Frank Miller just decides, hey, I want to do this thing. And if I'm correct, and I'm 85% sure I am, the weird thing they did is it is not a graphic novel. It is part of the series. They yes. they subtitle it year one, part one, part two, part three, part four. Yeah. And it just comes out as in the comic book series. Yeah. Um, you can get it as a graphic novel now, which yeah. is how I've always known it because I wasn't born until two years after this came out. <laughs> so. but, but I think that it's, it's a ground pick. It's a groundbreaking piece of work for multiple different reasons. One, it solidifies his origin because his origin has been changed and altered and which one is it? And then, he talks about this and then they, you know, cause the big thing is like pre post pre crisis before crisis on infinite earths, there was no, this is the set thing for anybody, which is why they did it to clean everything up. Mm -hmm. Um, so this gives you a definitive story of his origin of him becoming cap, uh, becoming captain America. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> Become captain America. Keeps seeing it on my screen, becoming Batman. And it's so, amazing such a solid incredible story that it influences batman forever mask of the phantasm batman begins the batman has its own thing some of the aspects in batman arkham origins are, are come from this like it yep. does thing and the thing that i like the most about this is it redefines gordon yeah because before this he wasn't he was more like what he was in the Batman movie with Keaton and more like from the TV show where he's just kind of this blah, da da, And this fleshes him out and turns him into more of a capable partner or somebody that Batman would actually work with and not some bumbling guy who's just sitting there. So I mm. really feel like this does the changes. This thing does resonates forever after that. And there's not a lot of graphic novels or storylines that can really say that. What they do with Gordon in this story is, I, I, I mean, th this is this is the kind of Gordon I love. Like, yeah, I grew up with bumbling Gordon, but I also grew up with the Gordon we see in Batman and the Animated Series. You know, and yeah. The year one's the, the story, the origin story for Jim Gordon we get in year one. Like if you told me that if, if you told me that Frank Miller's year one was the continuity origin for Batman in the animated series, I'd a thousand percent believe you. Oh yeah. Like if they just said that they just if the, if if DC came out today, if 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 Jeff Loeb came out today and said, is it Jeff Loeb? No. Um, um, who's in charge of DC Comics right now? Jeff Loeb. Why would it be Jeff Loeb? Jeff Johns. No, son of a bitch. I'm leaving this all in so I can live in my shame that I'm forgetting. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Jim Lee? No. Why is it not Jim Lee? Jim Lee is the creative director. <laughs> that that's what I'm thinking of. Yes, Jim Lee. Thank you. Yeah, Jim Lee. I, was Jim say. Lee. <laughs> I said Jim Lee, and then in my head I was like, why did I say Jim Lee? Because for some reason my my mouth said Jim Lee, my brain thought Stan Lee. Guys, I'm having a moment. All right. <laughs> I'm it's, leaving all this in. Yeah, Chief Creative Officer of DC Comics. Jim Lee. Jim Lee. That's right, Jim Lee. Yeah, that was Jim. Now Jim Lee. Remember. Now I can't. If Jim Lee came out today and said that we are officially holding hands with 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 James Gunn, so you've got Jim and James holding hands, saying that Batman Year One is the official canon origin to Batman the Animated Series. I think everybody would go, "Yeah, that tracks. That's fine." The two gyms of DC. I like it. I think two this is a new sitcom. The Jim and Jim. Working in, <laughs> um, anyway, what a tangent. Um, yeah, what they do with what they do with Gordon in this. Um, I mean, they they turn they 
they turn them truly into the most partner of partners. It's like, yeah, it no longer becomes just Batman's crusade. It becomes Correct. a partnership. It, 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 it stops be, it, it takes it from being a crusade and makes it like a movement. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the beginnings of Batman being a movement. Um, and, and so that's, that's kind of what that's not kind of, that is part of what makes year one so special you know something to say too about frank miller is like yeah he had done uh dark knight returns the year before this but also in that time before doing this he uh he uh also worked on daredevil board again before doing yeah. this um which we're going to be seeing in live action in a year ish um <laughs> ish they're filming it right now um and daredevil born again is is quite possibly one of one of the great the greatest marvel comics runs hands down um it it might be it might be right up next to dark knight returns as far as frank miller's best work um but also right up there is batman year one and also it was it is worth mentioning too uh denny o'neill was the editor on this yeah the great the great denny o'neill he has been shaping batman for decades or he did shape comic book he was shaping comic books for decades man he created ra's al ghul he also created optimus prime throw that one out there good call good call good call denny o'neill r.i.p uh 2020 passed away yeah r.i.p denny o'neill um yeah year one is it's i mean it's i mean it's truly something special with with when I when I think noir comic book Batman, I think Batman Year One. Like that's whenever so when people were talking about the the Batman, it's like, yeah, we we loved that it felt like Year One. We wanted it to feel like Year One. We wanted to see live action Year One. People have been wanting that for a while. We thought that's what we were getting with Batman Begins. Do not get me wrong, Batman Begins is an incredible movie, but it wasn't Year One. It, it's it was. Yeah, it was they, it was year one for that Batman, but yeah. it wasn't Batman year one. <laughs> it it takes some beats, but it doesn't. Uh, Oof, it, that's generous. Yeah. Well, no, I <laughs> it, mean, it's, it's it's okay. Look, look, Batman Begins is an adaptation of year one the way that Logan is an adaptation of old man Logan. That is fair. That <laughs> okay. is, fair. is it elements like, are there? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's about Logan and he's an old man, and that is where the similarity that is where the adaptation stops. Um, yeah. Batman begins is about Batman in his first year, and that is where the adaptation stops. Uh, so the, the Batman, even though it's in Batman's second year, draws far more heavily from year one. Um, yeah. and the long Halloween, strangely enough. No. A lot from the long Halloween. I'm going on a tangent here. I love year one so much. I, I gush about this thing constantly. Well, it, it's anytime somebody wants to know like what's a way to get into, into Batman comics, I'm like Batman year one. Yeah. <laughs> it's right in the title. Yeah, it's well, because it's also, you know, you get to see what he's doing, why he's doing it, beyond like his parents are dead. And then you also see, like you're saying, like why Gordon's doing what he's doing. And then why for the rest of the comic book series, Gotham is in chaos because of all the different corruption and crime and, and things that are going on there. And even though he's fighting it and he defeats some of the guys, like there's still always going to be somebody else to take the spot. But I, I do, I think it's perfectly paced. Uh, you know, it's four parts. You get so much story in those four parts. Unlike a lot of yes, comics. Dude. They cram a lot into this story, man. And it doesn't feel overblown or or overpacked or anything. It's like, man, you guys used every inch of the page you were given to work with. Yeah. And it like I said, it's not even just Batman. You know, they fully flesh out Gordon and all the things he's going through. So I, I really do. I I think there's enough here to see like how do you become a crime fighter, a vigilante? you let some animal break into your house and it inspires you. Yeah. <laughs> well, like th there's also just like some truly like iconic imagery in this, in this book too. Like, I mean like the shot of him standing on top of the dining room table yeah. at, at Falcon is, is it that's Maroney's house, right? I, is believe, Maroney's right? Or I can never remember Falcon. one of them. Falcon's one of them. Scratches. Right. Yeah. Falcon's house. 
um and just just that that monologue he gives them um and, yeah. and it, i mean i can see the panel on my head of just, just that figure yeah. um it's so scary <laughs> It's, it, it is very scary, and uh, and also shout out to uh, David Mazzuchelli, who uh, did the art was the artist on this one, and Richmond Lewis, his wife was the colorist. Um, uh, I mean, I, I there are so many there are so many like just pages of this that I want to just have framed. Yeah, you know what I mean, like if I get like I I look it's like I I love there's a, there's a Facebook group called No Context Comics, which by the way, if you're not in that Facebook group, join it now because. It's hilarious how many how weird comic books are out of context. Um, yes, but there's also some truly great panels in comics that are just that you, it's 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 crazy what I've seen writers and artists do with comic books in in three panels on a page, you know, yeah. and and year one is just is just all of that. There's there's so the the conveyance of tone like it's it's like you know like when you watch a movie like when you watch the batman and it's that opening scene in halloween and it's rainy and it's cold and it's gross it's like you can feel yourself in that city it's like it's like i can smell that city right now you know what i mean you get that with the art and the page of year one it's like i i yeah i i i can smell these sewers i can smell these sewer grates right now yeah. I, I can feel like like when he's when he's you know going down the red light district and you know it's all those neon lights it's like I can feel like you know as, as a guy who has spent many a night walking down sidewalks in a downtown area in Halton <laughs> cities as a, as a comedian like like I do a lot of walking in downtown areas uh, trust me I can I can feel those the, the I can hear the hum of those lights I can feel the weird heat coming off of it in the rain like i can see the steam coming off of it that it's it's just to say they paint a picture when they paint a picture in this book is is it sounds redundant but i mean it's like i can they they do it so well and having the shaping of the tone with the di the dialogue and the mo and the internal monologue and all that i mean it really brings gotham city to life yeah and, and conversely like anytime there's action going on like he there's there's weird things he does that I'm like I don't know why this works so well but it works incredibly well to the action and the speed and you know just because like he's not one of those uh, the artist is not one of those guys who's making everybody super buff and ripped and crazy big splash base panels like he's yeah. he's using everything he can and the the amount of action he conveys. Cause that's the hardest part, like writing comics right now and dealing with some of these artists, it's like trying to get them to understand, like, like, man, you've got to, you've got to highlight the action. We don't have the luxury of step-by-step -step, like a film, mm -hmm. but then you're going to have to make sure that that action works. You can't yeah. just draw two people punching each other. Like there's gotta be some dynamic movement here. And yeah, this guy just has that down pat. Well, especially when you were consider this is Batman year one. And this is Batman Year One in '87. He's not swimming in tech, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This, this is this is Batman being Batman. This is Batman being a man that is a bat. Yeah. Um. This this or a bat that is a man. I don't know. The, I think the Big Bang Theory had this debate. Um. He he is a guy who was relying on his ninja skills that he yeah. that he is yeah. uh, that he has picked up and some smoke bombs. And a Home Depot membership, because yeah, pre I'm pretty sure that floodlight he uses to spook the 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 the, uh, the the mobsters was from Home Depot. I think I've seen that one at Home Depot or uh, Builder Square, because I don't know if Home Depot exists. Oh my there. god, Builder <laughs> Square! I remember. <laughs> oh my god, I feel old. Oh god, I remember going to Builder Square in the '90s. Oh. <laughs> oh, too much '90s nostalgia going around right now for my taking. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man, I and then also like we haven't even talked about like the like the whole the whole way they work Catwoman into into the origin as well because again it, it's one of those things that Batman did so so well is because that is a that is a romance that is really easy to make feel contrite. Yeah, 
to just make feel like yeah it's like it's like why are they attracted to each other well because it's batman and catwoman yeah but like why are these two people attracted to each other i don't believe they're attracted to each other you can't just tell me they are and yeah. i thought i thought pattinson and 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 zoe had great chemistry so you need to have that chemistry for an on-screen and it's hard to convey that it's hard to convey that kind of chemistry sometimes on a comic book page yeah. on any page but on a comic book page especially and so a lot of it comes down to the dialogue you've really got to sell it on the dialogue and i think they do a great job of not so much building a ro the romance but the seduction yeah the seduction of catwoman and batman um it's it's ah it's it's done so and also uh, like keeping holly as part well i mean i think this is where they introduce holly isn't it isn't this where holly gets introduced as part of uh selena's origin oh the little kid the 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 yeah uh, the 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 yes yes she, I don't think she, she hadn't existed before yeah um because she because that that comes back in the dark knight rises you know with juno temple remember okay. she was she was remember she was um anne hathaway's friend in the movie Okay. Yeah, I've, she just wasn't playing a child because they because <laughs> Chris Nolan was like, yeah, I understand why. I understand it was for shock value in a comic book. This is a PG thirteen movie in twenty twelve. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah. Fair, fair, um, fair. Yeah. Um, so it, I just I like that they it it just it it was a nice addition to Selena's origin story to see that it it's it's a great way to round out the character of Selena. Yeah better and i also appreciate the the different kind of twist they took on it with the batman where it was instead of being this you know other you know prostitute this child prostitute it was like it was just a, it was a yeah you know, hers it was a yeah. roommate you know co-worker whatever so it's just it's a it's a it's a great it's a great dynamic to have in selena's origin that you all you don't have to commit to the icky creepy thing yeah. from the comic book there's other ways to do it and still give selena a little bit more of that humanity to her thank you frank miller <laughs> yeah oh no he he does he i mean it's it's incredible that one guy wrote two of the greatest and most influential influential batman comics of all time mm -hmm. in these two books and and personally i think over time year one has risen up the ranks for me mm -hmm. um i think we've talked about it before on the phone i really do like the dark knight but i think it's been rehashed so much and the more time that goes by that book is very very dated because it was full of such pop culture of the time oh you mean the dark knight returns what did I say? You said the Dark Knight, and I was like, okay, where the Dark Knight rises. Like, the Dark Knight rises. Returns. I'm sorry. The Dark Knight <laughs> returns. The Dark Knight returns. It's the other graphic novel Frank Miller wrote. I'm sorry. It's it's just dated. Very, very dated. Oh, it's it's hitting you over the head with the fact that it's in the 80s. Yeah. I mean, and it's 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 taking a burlap sack, filling it with little plastic eights and zeros and and beating you with it. Yeah. Cause I let somebody, a, a younger friend of ours, she was like 21, 22 at the time. And I let her borrow it. I was like, Hey, read it. Tell me what you think. And I remember her bringing it back. It's like, what you think? And she's like, uh, uh, and I was like, had that moment of like, she has no idea what any of this is. Yeah. <laughs> None Not of these so. things make any sense. So it was, it was like, yeah. So then like, I think, yeah, I think the last couple of times I've read it, I'm just like, yeah, I'll just keep reading your one. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that instead. <laughs> Or the Batman I, I, cult. I love 80s nostalgia, so I'll never get tired of it. Um, <laughs> but I, I wanted to throw something because this this always this was always an interesting choice for me. Um, okay. With this, so and again, I'm saying this because we 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 we've said this already. The Dark Knight Returns comes out first, right? Correct. In the Dark Knight Returns, he's married to. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. He, when I say he. Uh, Gordon is married to this blonde woman named Sarah, who seems kind of younger, but not totally. Like not not inappropriately younger, but just like a few years younger. But Sarah is also the name of the woman 
he's having you know the the sergeant he's having the affair with in in year one so what 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 he is saying is that in year one he has the affair with sarah him and his wife patch everything up but then eventually they still get divorced and he just goes back to sarah later on (laughs) and then she's the one who gets the thank you in the in this in in the retirement speech (laughs) which by the way his children were not at. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> kind of makes you wonder, man, what happened to this Gordon's family? <laughs> well, because here's the thing, like, and this is where I may get called out on this, mm. but like, if you really look across the board, with the exception of year one, yeah, and like, I'm saying this because all of this is before, because Long Halloween's like mid or late '90s, correct? Yeah, um, I know. I don't know why it's that... like 93. Okay. So all through the no, long Halloween's not 93. I'm it? looking it up. Make your point while I look it up. Hold on. It's 97. Okay. Oh wow. I was way off. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say it's pretty late. My my point more is that like if you read any of those old Batman comics from the 70s, 80s, 90s, yeah, Batgirl's around, Barbara's around, there's no wife. Yeah. So she, yeah, she's in the long Halloween. Now I haven't read the follow up to long Halloween in a long time, so I can't recall if she's in that, but she's oh, not, Lord, it's been years. <laughs> she's not in year three. Well, I mean, year three doesn't even have Gordon in it. I'll see. He's, I, I, I don't think he's in year three. <laughs> yeah. But my point more is that like, no, he would, he did. She did not stick around. Like it's yeah, pretty, because they have a son. The son is not in the comics after that either. Yeah, Gor- Gor- Gordon's origin, while I do love the one that's established in year one, it, it, Gordon's family has <laughs> always been a little, it's it, it's like Richie's older brother in, uh, in Happy Days. It's like yeah. one day he went upstairs to his room and just kind of never came back down. Yeah, because uh, yeah, pretty much as far as Gordon's family goes, it's always, we've always known it's Gordon and Barbara. Yeah. And 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 beyond that, it's always kind of been up to interpretation. So um, I've always thought he was she was either had passed or she had left him long ago. I I always assumed he's a cop. That's a hard job yeah. to have and maintain a marriage. Divorce rates among law enforcement are really high because of the hours and yeah the stress and the th- other things that can happen with being married to a police officer. Uh, so spouses leave so i just always figured that she left and then took the daughter with and then that's why barbara showing up later was such a big deal because like oh i'm an adult now i'm gonna go to college and go live with my dad yeah so So that was was my interpretation so it just it was it was the reason i'm bringing up is it just felt like i don't know i get i think what i'm getting at more is like i don't know if i liked the inclusion of the affair to me, that's the only thing about year one where I go, I pull back a little bit is because I understand it's there. It, it To me, it felt like we needed something to fill out an issue. We, we, we were missing. We needed to fill out, to, to fill out the story a little bit. The, the drama of, of them having the affair to me always felt weird. It's well, and I think what it is, is, going along with what you brought up it it ultimately is probably the downfall of their marriage because the oh, I just meant that ends, it's, weird. It's, it's weird that frank miller included it is what i'm getting at. well and i I'm think like, what, why does this have to but but i'm also like i don't know but i don't know it just it i didn't need it i guess i'm like this just it just it, it feels like soap opera drama yeah you know what i mean there's other ways to do it you could just it, have her leave considering everything that's happening to them at that point in their lives yeah if if they had just said hey she can't take it anymore and she fucking left i didn't think everybody would have been like yeah no that makes sense yeah <laughs> no it, sense. It's, I, I think it's i think it adds like i like it because of this a self-right a, a righteous cop who is trying to find fight corruption is himself corrupted in a different way. And that corruption 
almost gets used against him, but because unlike these other people, he's willing to bring it to light and tell his wife, hey, this is what happened. I can't have them use it against you. I need to do this thing. I think shows more of his character that he's willing to do that. Now it's it's still horrible, but I think that's who Gordon is. I've made this mistake. I'm going to fess up to the mistake because I don't want this mistake to keep me back from what I'm doing. Um, but I think there could have been other ways to do it. Uh, but I, I, I've never had an, an issue with it per se. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I, I get, I think I get where you're coming from, especially considering that he confesses it to her after seeing playboy Bruce Wayne. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I, you know, thinking about it like that, it almost makes me think could, th- could then this be like, if, if having his parents get murdered is what turned Bruce Wayne is what ultimately is the catalyst that makes Bruce Wayne Batman is having an affair. The thing that is, is like, is that dark shadow, that dark cloud hanging over Gordon's head. Maybe, I don't know. No, that's possible. I don't know. Maybe, I, not, maybe, maybe now I'm trying to overcomplicate it. I don't know. Maybe well, I don't know. I think I, I'm, I I'm making say, a man out of a molehill here. No, no, here, this is the other thing I always like okay. dark Knight returns was written before year one but they make a joke in dark knight returns about how bruce wayne used to use fake champagne yeah in his glasses to fool jim gordon so he wouldn't know he was batman and then yeah. in year one we see it happening <laughs> oh no it's it's a great callback to his own joke yeah but again, that's kind of that just kind of lends itself to the brilliance and the writing that is year one yeah. ultimately and frank miller comes- yeah, fucking Frank Miller, man. Seriously, God. Um, with, seriously, like the trifecta alone of Dark Knight Returns, Daredevil: Born Again, and Batman Year One. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's phenomenal. It's incredible, man. Um, all right, we should talk about it. Um, so the animated movie. It sucks. All right, we're done. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Suck. Here's, it, it, the movie itself doesn't suck. One singular aspect of it sucks the voice the that voice is acting. the voice performance of ben mckenzie as batman i think ben mckenzie is a fine actor he was the best part of gotham other than the kid that was playing not joker and then eventually joker oh and penguin and riddler but anyway but still ben mckenzie as gordon best part um atrocious voice acting is un unwatchable unlisten listenable <laughs> voice acting as batman in this he does not give two-thirds of a shit about the script he's reading in this in in, in the in for this movie oh my god oh my god he does not care <laughs> he does not care this is like and I'm saying this about my favorite movie in the world. This is like Harrison Ford's shitty uh, uh, detective voice over in the original release of Blade Runner. <laughs> like, does not give a damn. Everything else about the movie is fine. I think did a really great job of, of bringing the art to life. I think all the rest of the voice acting is fine. I think as far as adaptations go, solid. Jesus, Ben McKenzie is so bad as the voice of Batman in that movie. He, 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 wow. He is, he is really bad. And I didn't, I'm not a, I haven't watched Breaking Bad. I probably never will. I, I liked parts of, I, I watched, if I watched Malcolm in the Middle, I liked the show, but I never mm-hmm. sat down and watched it. So I did not have the attachment to Brian Cranston that a lot of people have. Mm-hmm. So, I didn't think he was terrible. I just think he was miscast. I don't know if I liked him cast as that character, but I can't sit here and say he did a horrible job. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, th- I think you're insane. But okay. <laughs> That's all. Like, I, I, Brian Cranston on a Breaking Bad is 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 is, is genius. Um, I don't doubt it. I've heard lots of good things, and everything I've seen him in, he's always fantastic. That's why, I, like I said, I just felt like. Uh, I just wasn't, it just wasn't there for me, you know, but, but I uh, wholeheartedly agree with you. Ben McKenzie as Batman is just terrible. It is insane yeah. how bad of a, how bad it is that he does it. I don't like, look, 
there's we went through the list of people who've played Batman in voiceover. There's a reason we glossed over Ben McKenzie. I would take any of those. Bring Reno Romano back from the Batman Ooh, cartoon and let him yeah. do this. Movie. Like anything. Daddy like. Yeah, let's do it. Anything would have been better than what this guy did. That's just me. <sighs> yeah, I. <sighs> <laughs> it's a bummer too because it's like again other than mckenzie's voice acting the movie nails year one it i does. have no complaints other than mckenzie's voice acting but it's that bad it it looks pretty sharp they capture they do the thing that they don't do the thing that a lot of these directed dvds movies do is change so much that it's like why would you even call it the same thing yeah, look at i'm looking at you hush yeah <laughs> Looking at you, Hush. Looking at you, Injustice. Uh, I could do this all day. <laughs> yeah. So I think that the, for me, they did a good job of like, this is the story. We're telling the story. We're not going to change much. We're going to add some action because, you know, combat panels limit that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I thought it was really cool. That, oh, well, and that goes back to your earlier point, too, about having to really sell the action. The movie sells the action very well. Yeah. The movie, much like the comic book, I felt those punches land. <laughs> when Batman punches a guy, I felt it in my bones. Um it's yeah, but again, it, that, that speaks to a how good how good the art is in the comic book and b how good a job they did at adapting that art to animation for the film. Yeah. Um, it, is what it comes down to. Look, I'll um, tell you what, if there's anybody out there who's so good at sound design can pull Ben McKenzie's performance out of the movie. I will do my best to redo it just so I don't have to listen to him play Batman. <laughs> are you, are you issuing me a challenge, Matthew Hasso? Are you challenging me to redub Batman year one, the animated movie? Because sir, I do not back down from any challenge, but if there's one challenge, I especially do not back down from. It is a production and editing challenge, sir. <laughs> I can make this happen. <laughs> well, everybody in six months from now, if there is a, because good God, it's going to take me six months to have the free time to do that. Yeah. If I there's do it. what will we call that? The, the Shay cut of Batman year the shake, one, the Shay cut of Batman year one. Yeah. Like the, and everyone goes like, why does Batman sound like Ray Romano now? <laughs> hey, mom, I'm going to go fight crime because they killed you. I'll just, I'll do the, I'll do the whole thing in my, in my, uh, this is totally off topic, but I'm leaving this in because it's funnier than hell. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, who I used to do VO work with. And, uh, one of the things that she always struggled with was a Boston accent. Um, she said she uh, she said she couldn't ever figure out how to do like the exaggerated one and and the 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 more genuine one was even harder. She's like she's like but she's like if I could just get the the satirical one like the SNL one you would think yeah she's like at least then I could probably land this like some 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 basic work and I was like you just need to go w do what I did and that's watch the smart park commercial from the Super Bowl a few years ago mm -hmm. a million times. Because first of all, that commercial is rent free in my head, and if there's one thing I love to do, it's walking around going, "You can't pack a cabin. You can't pack a cabin." <laughs> oh no, no, my cat's got smart pack. Smart pack. What's smart pack? Oh yeah, my cat's wicked smart. It can pack itself. You can't pack. Your cat's packing itself. My cat's wicked smart. That's the I, dumbest commercial ever made, and I will watch it on a loop until my eyes start to bleed. Okay, I will do that accent and do all of Batman's dialogue in that accent, and it'll still be better than Ben McKenzie in this movie. Have you seen that Batman Batfleck meme where it's him with the Boston accent? It's hysterical. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Don't get me started, Scarecrow. Oh my God, it's so. I can't do funny. accents. I don't know why I tried. Oh my God, it's hysterical. <laughs> the first time I saw that, I died laughing. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I think we're anyway, Batman Year One. So yeah. yeah. What, so what if Batman Year One took place in Boston? <laughs> what if yeah. it was at a Bruins game? <laughs> um, I. Uh, 
th- this is one again i said it earlier like when someone when someone asked me like if they wanted to get into batman comic books or comic books in general like what's it go to it's like literally batman year one like it's not just a joke about the fact that it's called year one it's like if you want to see just a stripped down to his bare bones basics of what batman is like if you need a thesis statement like like batman year one to me is the thesis statement of what is batman yeah like what is batman like what is what like if batman was a concept give me that concept if you if you told ai to generate imagery that was the 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 depiction of the concept of batman it would spit out year one yeah but it would look and, it would look weird and the hands would be melted and they'd have too many fingers <laughs> yeah <laughs> ai sucks anyway go ahead <laughs> what were you saying no you're you're right on both you're about to make a point i'm sorry no no you're, <laughs> you're right on both accounts but yeah i i i do think like this is one of the best graphic novels it, it tells you everything you need everything you just said is perfect yeah. If you, I want to hear what you guys think. I, I, first of all, I love how you said everything you said is perfect, and I said, "Yeah, <laughs> like I agreed with you." Like, yeah, you're right. Everything I said is perfect. Yeah, we always want to hear from you guys. Uh, if you're listening to this show uh, or or streaming it on YouTube, obviously, please leave it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, if you're if you're listening to the show uh, on Good Pods, you can leave it in the comments of this of this episode. Let us know what you guys think uh, and and rate the episode wherever you're listening to this episode. Please make sure you're following or, su- or subbing or liking the episode. Whatever, whatever, whatever the engagement thing is that the platform <laughs> needs to measure to make us feel valued as humans. Uh, do do please do the thing. Uh, call to action, everybody. Call to action. Do the thing. Um, we we would really appreciate it. Um, thank you to everybody who joined us for our uh, live episode of a hundred episodes. Um, I love that we joked in the live episode that like if you guys ever hear a Nightwing episode, it's because <laughs> we had too much shit going on that week, and it was literally the next week we put out the Nightwing episode <laughs> yeah. because I woke up Monday morning to a full calendar of meetings at work and i had a sh- week's worth of gigs booked and i was like cool i'm not gonna be around <laughs> yep that pretty much and i yeah and i have that that like hey this week i have that window do you have it available you're like no it's bricked up i'm like all right well oh. nightwing it is <laughs> yep that's why i'm so glad we had this window for this week because yep. otherwise it was going to be like uh and we're out yeah so <laughs> Um, last thing i want to say yeah. this noise is my shoes it's not my battery on my fire extinguishing my fire smoke detector not going. Oh, okay well then so. well then see see now i'm judging you because if it was your smoke detector i'd have been like oh that's a that's an annoying bitch and i have to deal with but whatever i mean nothing you can do about it now i know it's because you've been moving your sneaker around it's like okay you're doing that on purpose at that I'm point that, that's on you they're noisy shoes then here, here's what you do stands the fuck still i should have just taken them off i'm sorry guys you should have just <laughs> stood still or just not said anything way to way to way to confess to a crime you hadn't been accused of matt you know who would take you out in an instant batman uh especially frank miller's batman guys thank you so much for joining us in our very first uh, uh year one breakdown we will be back with another one of these the end of next month uh matt who are we breaking down next month are we? I thought we we're doing right year two, Batman year two. Oh, that's right. We are doing year two and year three before we do the other year ones, aren't we? I mean, it's up to you. We could go to year one of of Nightwing. No, we should stick to the original plan that I totally forgot we had already agreed upon because it's late at night when we're recording this, and I'm very tired, and I'm not cutting any of this out either because I have to edit this on the fly. So I'm doing as little as possible. Batman, awesome. Yeah, Batman year two. I think it's yeah. the least liked year story of all of them. But uh, we're going to talk about it because it does generate one of the best Batman movies of all time. Is it really the least of uh, of the three? I guess yeah, that makes sense. It's not Even the least the- like of all time, no. But of the three, yeah, I think you're I think you're right. But we'll talk about that next month, and uh, in another breakdown of of a Batman origin story. And as always, we'll be back again next week with another brand new episode of We Are the Batman. Same bat time, same bat podcast channel. Bye bye.